Hi, my name is Lester Beer and I am going to teach you how to make a clay elephant. The first, the first thing you need is a piece of wedge clay and this is how you wedge your clay. You push it a bit forward too and you bring it over and forward and over. This is to prevent um, air pockets in your clay because air pockets in your clay can explode in a kiln. So once it's finished wedged, so we can start doing our elephant now. So you need a piece of um, string or a fish line like mine and you can cut two pieces. Try to cut it into equal pieces. So what you do, you make a round ball, the one piece and the second piece too. See that they are almost an equal size. You can see they're not equal size, so I will punch a little bit off, add it to that one, and roll it again. So it looks quite equal. So what we do now is we start to do a punch pot. So see that it is nice and round. So put your thumb in. And you can fold your four fingers over and you punch. This is how you do a normal punch pot. So we keep on punching it. If you one thumb, one hand can't do it, you can put your other thumb inside and we try to keep it as round as possible. And not to go flat. We don't punch clay like this. So we punch it with our thumbs inside. See it's nice and thin on the sides. And I do not punch a lot on the edge because that's where I need a little bit more clay to join the two punch pots. So I do my second one. Keep on punching. And see. They equal. And need to be almost the same size. And this depends also on how big you want your elephant. If you want a big elephant, you can make your balls bigger. And punch bigger or smaller so see so what we need is a toothbrush and a little bit of water this is our glue always tap the toothbrush on the side so you don't have too much water and your toothbrush on the edge and you score here too just an old little toothbrush and you join the two see that they are neatly joined and now we smooth it and because we don't want to see the seam line so this is the body of the elephant or any other uh, animal you can make a lot of other animals now I joined all four legs they untied and I turn it around and what I normally do is, because the elephant's backside is a little bit lower than his front side, so I'll look which side is the front and which side is the back. So what I normally do is, you can see there's a little bit intense, so what I do, just to make it a better body, so I add a little bit more clay, just to build it up. And not having all these dents in. So what? Okay. And I push it. And I don't want to smooth it too much because this is an elephant. This is the wild. And they've got lots of wrinkles in their body. So I add some more, as you can see a little bit more, and then on this side too, see that your clay is nice and soft, that you can join it easy. I do not score underneath because I don't want it too wet, and I add this side too, as you can see, a little bit more. I always try to put one foot a little bit more to the front, bend it a little bit, 
can be created by yourself. You can make nice big toenails. And I still push a little bit to the back. So now I'm going to leave him for now. So we're going to do the front now. So what I normally do is I pinch a piece of clay off. I roll it. And then I have a look if this is... Um, in proportion? In proportion, okay. Can I last this in the So now I'm going to pinch a piece of clay off. And I roll it because I want to see. We want it in proportion. As you can see, it's too small. And you can't use a big one like that because you can see it's not it's too big. So I will add a little bit more to this clay and I roll again. And uh, that looks fine for me. So what I do is I roll it and then I take my fingers and I make a nice little point of this ball because I want to add the trunk in here. So what I do now is I take another piece of clay, I roll it on the one side so the one side is thinner because I want to make the trunk. The trunk is not the same size from top to bottom so we roll it on the one side and uh, have a look, yes it looks good. So what I do is I flatten that, I can score this a little bit and I put this over that point and I join it again. So we will get the trunk, smooth it. And what you can do, you can take a knife and you can make little lines down here, just roughly. So, I pat it a little bit. And because the elephant do have two dents in his top part of his head, I score that and I score this. And I push it. I hold my one hand over the body. And I push there, and this is where his eyes come. So I just use a punch method. I push that in. And now it's up to you what you want to do with your trunk. You can bend it this way. Or I like normally let mine hang. It's a little bit too long. And you can let it hang. I like my elephants hanging trunks. And you can be creative. And... You can slice it a little bit open there and make it. And if it's kids, I normally put the peanut in there. But it's up to you what you want to do there. So once that is on, we can start doing his ears before. Um, I can put tasks on before we do his ears. So what I normally do is take a piece of clay, roll it on both sides of the um, coil. So keep the thickness in the middle to make the tasks. And oh, it might be a little bit too long, so I punch a little bit off. So I roll again. And you fold it and see, yes, it looks good. So what I do, if you look at the elephant, he's got a little mouth underneath. So I normally just pinch that a little bit. And you will see there's a little mouth there. So I just fold it, the back of the trunk. And I push it up as far as possible. And you can put the trunks the way you want it. And... Push it on there, and you've got two trunks, two tasks, I mean, um, trunk, it's a little bit thick at that bottom there, I can make him a little bit shorter, you see, all up to you. Now, he needs some ears, 
So again, we punch two pieces of clay. See that they equal, round them. And because elephant's ears are very thin, so we pad it. And might be a little bit big. We'll see. As you can see, I even sometimes tear it because um, in the wild their the ears look really scruffy. So I might be a little bit big, but what I normally do, I punch that out, piece out, so I put them on the sides there. And I punch it on and it's up to you how you want to fold it. And then I do this side. And it's really up to you how you want your ears. And then we do the tail. And the elephants normally do have a ridge on the back. And I try to make it right through to the tail. So I need another snake. I roll it. Quite long. We will punch it off. It's too long. I start right at the back. And what I do is I punch it on both ends on the elephant. Ooh, be careful, don't punch too hard. That's his reach. And what I do, when it comes to the tail, I will punch a piece off there. And I normally see that the elephant's tail is attached to his one leg. Because so it's so thin and it always can break off if people are not careful in the kiln or when it dries. And then I show this a little bit of hair there. And the tail, they have got a little bit of hair. And see that everything is joined very well. Because things can fall off in the kiln when it dries. Because there's a lot of water in the clay now. But there's still one thing we need. It's a little tiny, teeny eyes. So what we'll do, we put some clay off and you just put it on there and in that. And what I normally do is I try to put, because I've got eyelashes, and all I do is, as you can see, sometimes just round eyes, but this ear is not really not so I'm going to make another ear. He looks a little bit too scruffy. Punch this. Okay. And that looks much better. Push it on. And then you can do anything with your elephant. Painting, we can try it. Oh, and before you forget, when this is done, what we do now is if you can get uh, any stick, uh, I will take the same knife, but we need to punch a hole in because it's hollow inside, and if it goes in the kiln, it will explode. So I normally put a little hole in all my elephants because it's hollow and not to explode so there's the elephant